Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, and that's our segment. We'll take a look at the stories making headlines today. I will begin with the Nation newspaper this morning. The headline reads, Why Insecurity is Rising by Lawan Ayade Ganduje, APC to Police, Rise Up to Challenge. How Kidnappers Evade Tracking by NCC. Government rejects failed state verdict by CFA ex US envoy. Malami here says, I didn't tell Buhari to suspend constitution. New constitution not feasible, says Senate. 9.9 .9 .9 billion naira Moniai Seng Road inaugurated. I mean, government to make life better for citizens, says Oyetola. Robbers hijack school bus in Undo. Oshun attacks. We lost four men, says police. Also on the nation newspaper, 160,617 candidates write 2021 mock UTME in 777 CBT centers. Those are the stories on the nation newspaper this morning. And uh, now on the Nigerian Tribune, uh, we can see there, it's going to be on your screen in uh, just a few seconds. It says, uh, new constitution, why National Assembly is handicapped. And that is from Ovie Omagege. It says, the CGN wants review of judges' salaries every four years. Can one's community uh, immunity clause removed and state's creation? Conference of speakers seeks amendments to impeachment procedures. Also on the Nigerian Tribune, no mass retirement of senior military officers, says uh, Defense Headquarters. And former President Ulushego Basonjo says, Nigeria now flowing with bitterness and sadness, laments growing number of out-of-school children. Partisan politics, least of my concerns now, says Mimiko. And uh, $1.5 million clinical trial uh, cost delays, uh, rather, okay, $1.5 million clinical trial cost delays first COVID-19 vaccine, says the federal government. We can also see on the Tribune this morning, alleged planned invasion of Southwest. We are ready for you, hunters, tell Fulani headsmen. I won't relent in transforming Oshun, says Oyetola, and four policemen, three and three civilians killed in Oshun bank robbery. Nigerians in pains provide good leadership, Otom tells Buhari, as reconstructed 65-kilometer um, Monia Ishein Road is inaugurated. Those are the b big ones on the... Uh, Nigerian Tribune this morning. On the Punch newspaper, hunger, hunger disease dominates northwest Zamfara in crisis. MSF raises the alarm. Team treats 10,300 children in three Zamfara towns so for severe acute malnutrition. Others, women abducted, raped, returned to communities. FG not assisting, says Zamfara. Also on the Punch newspaper, foreign investors withdraw 99.94 billion naira in four months. Cup members, part of defense, can be mobilized for war. That's according to NYSC. To stop abductions, sponsor factional bandits, Gumi tells federal government. President berates ex-U.S. envoy. Magazine over U.S. over Nigeria is falling apart, is failing reports. Bello dismisses rotational presidency, says Nigeria deserves best material. Akabio visits Tompolo over ex-warlord's threats against oil facilities. Police ambush invading bandits in Katsina, Q5. Gandaje raises the alarm over gathering of bandits in Kano Forest. Laws shouldn't be made to hinder technology elections. That's according to INEC. Police arrest three-man gang for stealing victims 572,000 naira through ATM. Police repel gunmen's attack on Zamfara Fulani settlement. Get a new constitution almost impossible, says National Assembly. Those are the stories on the Punch newspaper. All right, now on the Daily Independent. Nigeria flowing with sadness and bitterness. Once again, uh, that's from former President Lushegu Mabasonjo. Buhari should resign. He has nothing more to offer, says Afenifere. 
that says United Nigerians, not 2020, 2023 elections, should be priority. Chief of Army Staff, mass retirement not contemplated in military, says uh, Defense Headquarters. It also says uh, mil uh, most uh, senior officers free to stay or retire. And also soldier kills customs officer and himself at Seme border. Federal government lobbying to acquire more COVID-19 vaccines from donors. The Senate says it's impossible to frame a new constitution. Despite my defection, I still have great respect for the PDP, says Governor Ayadi. And the uh, APC lacks capacity to lead Nigeria, Otom is saying. Gunmen hijack a school bus in Ondo. And uh, we can also finally just uh, throw in this one. Uh, um, NPC to begin pre-test census in 112 local government areas. All right, on the um, Daily Independence, no. I, um, I beg your pardon, on uh, the Guardian newspaper, we see this one that says, Senate says no as campaigners demand brand new constitution. Christian Association of Nigeria monopolizing presidency by a region. Police kill five bandits in Katsina. ICPC urges publication of public servants' assets to check graft. Also, 70% of government agencies host data abroad despite $220 million local infrastructure. And gunmen hijack school bus in Ondo. And those are the stories we're looking at this morning. All right, good morning to our guest, uh, G.D. Johnson. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to our viewers and all over the world. How's the weather at your end? Thank you. Well, it's, 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 it's getting busy and <laughs> I hope it's going to be a cool, wet weekend <laughs> for every one of us. So well, let's, let's see how we do Okay, let's start with one story that, you know, made the headlines across all the papers and that is from... Uh, Former President Tolushegor Basinger saying, you know, Nigeria is, you know, currently filled with bitterness and <sighs> sadness and some of all of that. Uh, quickly react to that. Well, um, we don't need a suitsia to tell us to tell to tell us that. Um, what are the major stories that are we seen across the headlines of newspaper over 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 the course of this year? What are the stories that have dominated? The pages of newspaper from media reports and then if we if we domesticate it what are the stories that we have had from family friends and peers too and then if we personalize it what are the pressures that we have received in terms of help from our family members from friends uh, that are not working that require one form of um palliative or relief from, from from us. So it's it's, it's clear, it's, it's, it's clear. We read the story, school children abducted in in, in Ondo. We read the story of Greenfield parents, the university students that were that abducted in Kadna, saying that they paid 180 million ransom, allegedly paid 180 million ransom. And um, it's, a, it's a sad and sorry situation. That if you find yourself in any dark street, you are left alone in Nigeria because there's nobody to come for you, not even the government or its agency you actually come for you. Linking that story also with another part, another story, federal government is lobbying donors to donate more vaccine. Can you imagine the giant of Africa, the leading nation in Africa, lobbying donors to donate? more COVID-19 vaccine for us in Nigeria. That means that if uh, those do not don't give us the COVID-19, you are all left alone um, to, 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 to yourself. So it's, 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 it's in that street. There is sorrow, there is tears, and then there are blood all over all over the land and breadth of this of this country. It does not require prayer for us to solve this problem because if it require prayers, um, Nigerians are the people that go to churches more on Sunday and they go to mocks more today. Uh, prayer will not solve the problem for us. If it's based on religiosity, Nigeria should be the most developed country in the world, but we need decisive decisive action and we need um, decisive leadership for us to solve this, this, this problem. Okay, so another um, big story we've seen across the papers this morning is about the Senate saying that it would be impossible to frame a new constitution 
And he's basically saying, this is a Vyomagigi now saying that the reason why they can't frame a new constitution is because the 1999 constitution as amended does not include a clause on how to produce a fresh document. And the question really then is, what, what's the relevance of the constitution um, review that we're having if you know, you're saying there's not going to be a new document? Because we don't have strong institution, if you have strong institution, like a strong judiciary, the constitution we have is a byproduct of 1995 Constituent Assembly, which was meant to perpetuate our charter in power. You know, all the five political parties adopted Abacha until um, until death took Abacha away. And that was the report. And that report was dusted by 12 wise men. And those 12 wise men, in court, um, transformed that constitution, was transformed by the military council with Decree 24 to a constitution. And the opening par paragraph of the constitution said, with the people of Nigeria, well, with which people? It is the military that come up with that constitution. So there is the need, one of the things that have characterized this particular demo, democratism is the word for restructuring. Now, if you talk about restructuring, it's about re and structure. Change the structure. Change the structure of government. Change the structure of governance. Because the foundation for anything is the structure of government. The foundation for any building is the structure of the building. And the, the foundation for uh, the structure of our government is the constitution. And we said, if the foundation is not strong, there's nothing you can do on, on it. So when they started the jamboree, I told you last week, I said, it's just a clear waste of time. How would an assembly that was inaugurated in 2019 be planning to do constitutional review in 2021? When you and I know that by December 2021, politicking for the for 2023, we start. I said there is nothing meaningful that will come out of. It was more or less like we gave no hope to that um, to that constitutional review. There is nothing meaningful. They just want to distract us and spend and justify why they are spending money. How would you have constitutional review in in in, in topmost hotel? You go to the hotel. You can't find government buildings. Are you telling me God, federal government does not have buildings in all of the states they've selected? Are you telling me they can partner with states to look at the odds in those states where people can easily assess than rather than go to a uh, five-star hotel for them to have their tambourine that they are calling a uh, constitutional review? They are, they are giving us the scorecard of even something which they voted and deliberated on for us to have it. So there can never be any meaningful discussion that will come out of it. However, if they have the will and the desire to bring about a change, then definitely this could be reviewed. The president through executive, through uh, uh, executive order, made an executive order that gives financial independence to the legislature and to the judiciary. Such executive orders could be transformed into an act of the parliament. And the party that controls the the the, the state's House of Assembly, to, almost to turn of the state House of Assembly, is the same party that controls the center. It is the same party that controls the National Assembly. So if the will is there, and the desire is there for them to bring about a change, and it's a party that claims to be the party of change, then they should do it. I tell my folks in Lagos State, when they created the LCDAs and local government, they said Robert Sanjo was this, Robert Sanjo was that. I told my folks in 2015, I said, now, I will see whether the 37 CDAs in Lagos State will be listed in the fifth schedule of the constitution as part of the as part as part of the local government in Lagos State. They've not done anything. These people know how to play on, on their own intelligence. They know how to play on their own intelligence. And someone said you cannot fool people for some of the time. You cannot fool them all of the time. The time will come that the NSAS protest will not be on Lake Gate. The NSAS protest will take place on the floor of the State House of Assembly and on the floor of the National Assembly. And those in those seats will, will take to their heads because they will run for their lives. Because people will take the protest to the representative of the people. Okay, let, let's uh, talk now about um, something on the Nigerian Tribune. It says here, and that's from the Southwest, it says, alleged planned invasion of the Southwest. We are ready for you, hunters tell Fulani Headsmen. Uh, let's um, have your thoughts on that also. Well, um, if it takes hunters and not security agencies to come up with intelligence to deal with that, then it tells you how we have found ourselves 
where we are in this station. Well, uh, I will link this story with another story which you have in the newspaper and then I'll wrap both up. With the story about um, about Shigumi saying that the federal government should sponsor uh, rival uh, bandit groups so as to stop abduction. And then the Kano State Governor said that bandits are, are, are guarding in forests close to Kano. You begin to wonder, is there a nation where there is no security for lives and property? Is there a nation when citizens are to take to defending themselves um, from internal or external threat? And then, uh, uh, is there no shame for people that have been assigned responsibility to provide security for lives and property of people in this country? And when they see that the situation of security mission, the nation has turned to a state of anomie. And that's how we started with what Obasan just said. That's turned to a state of anomie, where the center cannot hold, everybody is left on its own. So, as far as I'm concerned, what are security agencies doing that to take orders to, 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 to come up with an idea on how to deal with invasion of the southwest by elders. And then who are the sponsors of the elders? What intelligence do we have? Uh, do we see the army responding to issues of banditry and elders like the way they responded to IPOC? Do, I, 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 have we seen that? Until we have a one clear, consistent approach towards dealing with insecurity, towards dealing with insurgency, Towards dealing with banditry, anything that threatens the peaceful coexistence of people in Nigeria, that threatens the territorial integrity of Nigeria, must be dealt with with decisively. Government should not be the spokesperson for for dissident groups, dissident groups such as bandits, such as such as bandits, such as elders, such as any group that wants to bring about this harmony in the nation. The government should speak with one voice to it. Other than that, we we'll treat someone with conciliatory approach and we we'll treat some with a, with, with a, with a confrontational approach. If you reward criminality, and we have seen that in Zamfara State, the governor asks people to submit their AK-47 and they give them two million. We've seen that in Casina State, which is the home state of the president. We've seen criminals being rewarded. So if you have a society where you reward criminality, you encourage more criminality. America attempted that when the colonial company that owns the colonial part that supplied gas line to Twitter was armed by Russian hackers. They paid four point five million dollars. What has happened again? Now they've added into their meat supply. So once you reward criminality, you get more criminals in the site. And government must deal decisively with criminal elements, whether they are elders, whether they are Boko Haram, whether they are farmers, whether they are whether they are whether they are militants. They must be deal with this until we do that. I tell you, we still have the same problem that we are having in this in this in this in this country. So, Mr. Johnson, do you agree with the Director um, General of the NYC with one of the ways to deal with criminals? You know, is mobilizing the you know call members for war because he mentioned in an interview recently that the call members of the NYC are part of the you know Nigerian defense policy and that they can be mobilized for war anytime that this is in light of all the violence and secessionist agitations in the country right if the security agencies cannot handle it those ones that are trained over a period of time now you not give coppers that are think, two weeks to three weeks with paramilitary training to go and face to go and face war. I'm not too, I'm just a rhetorical question. I think that statement was made for him to have relevance and for him to have a space in the public domain so that people can talk about that issue. And then you know the debate that is ongoing, whether the whether NYC should be scrapped or should not be scrapped. And that's the debate that is ongoing. That takes me also to another another issue. Should the director general of NYC be a military personnel under a civilian dispensation? Is the head of the defense of the FBI or CIA 
or NIA, the United States of America, at the heads of these agencies are the military men in uniform. That's why some of us have clamored that we only have civilian administration, we don't have democracy. In democracy, all military authority must be subjected to civilian control. So he's saying that just to have, just to let us know that the relevance and the relevance of NYC that you guys don't have to 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 to, to scrap NYC because that's one of the things that dominated the media landscape and the public sphere in the last in the last two weeks or there about is there a need you know I think what is discussed at the floor of the National Assembly is there a need for us to to have the NYC and scripting the NYC I think went through second reading on the floor of the National so it's just it's just um, getting people to know the relevance as far as I'm concerned. There's no comment okay. back that um, when we were having that discussion yesterday with my son, who would like ASAP in 2023, and we were saying that, in fact, my son has been saying that he doesn't want, he doesn't want to serve. Why would he serve? And then his, his, his friend joked with him that in 2023, it will be the year of election. So you will go, you will go and you'll be involved in, 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 in as, 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 as part of the electoral officers. You know what he said? He said, I will skip NYC in 2023. I will not serve in 2023. I will serve in 2024 because I can't put my life on the line trying to be an electoral officer in an election that I know that those that lost their life in the past who are their family are still, are still bearing the cost. So you could see um, these are conversations that are going privately. I just use my own family, my own as, 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 just, as, as just the background. And I'm sure there are, there are thousands, if not millions, of of, of, of Nigeria that are having that conversation should should my son go and serve should we should should we not should we not should we not serve and this All right. conversation Jide Johnson go out. thank you very much uh, for your time this morning thanks for speaking with us uh, looking forward to another thank Friday thank you it's a pleasure to be with you thank you very much All right. thank you very much. Stay with us here. Uh, still is a very, very uh, wet Friday morning across Lagos. We hope that you can make it to work uh, uh, in time and, of course, safe. We'll be back after this short break to tell you about what happened on this day in history. And I'm going back to the year 1996. Yes, do stay with us.